guys it's paulo tote welcome back to my channel on this video i'm going to show you how i make my cmos why i never heat my cmos and why i'd never eat cmos every day i'm also going to show you small extras such as why i always make my cmos with dull seaweed and why i always add a little bit of lemon so if you want to learn more watch this video it's jam packed let's go To get my sea moss ready to use, I add sea moss to a bowl and I add in some fresh water. When you put sea moss in water, it tends to expand and that's mainly because most of the sea moss that we buy is dried at some point. And then I add some dull seaweed, an adequate amount and some lemon. So I cut up half a lemon and I squeeze it into the water, cover the bowl up just above the sea moss. The reason I add lemon into my dose and into my sea moss is because it's the best absorb iron it needs to be paired with vitamin C. The vitamin C helps break down iron into a form that can be easily absorbed by the body. And this needs to happen at the time of the meals. That pairing will help you absorb more iron into the body. After I add it all into the bowl, I leave it for a little while to work its magic. Depends on the sea moss, I'll either leave it overnight, 12 hours or 24 hours. But sooner or later, it will start to soften up and you will see the dulse soften up and you see the sea moss soften up. Then I remove the water and add new water, a little bit more lemon and I blend it. You blend it, blend it until it gets to a bit of a gel format. Unfortunately, I've actually ran out of dulse seaweed yesterday. So here I've got a little bit of my old sea moss that's in my fridge, right? Don't know if you can see that, but this is something that I add to my smoothie. And uh, here's a brief preview of how I make it in my smoothie. Now I'm going to go over why I never heat or eat my sea moss every day. Some people on YouTube have said to soften up your sea moss, you should cook it, you should boil it. And I'll tell you why I disagree. And if you disagree with me also, comment below. On this channel, we are community and we help one another. One of the first reasons I don't eat sea moss every day is because sea moss is incredibly nutrient dense. So I'll give you an example. The recommended daily intake of iodine is 150 micrograms or 0.15 milligrams. Whereas sea moss, 100 grams of sea moss contains 800 micrograms and 0.8 milligrams. So guys, that's almost five times what your body requires a day from one source and that's not including all the other things you might eat throughout the day that might be iodine rich what that can do is take you over how much iodine your body requires and this is similar with other nutrients and then some people also take multivitamins and also take other herbs so this is overloading the body with specific nutrients and this potentially can be dangerous especially if you prepare it like i prepare it because i prepare it with dulse seaweed and dulse is another powerful nutrient dense seaweed it's rich in b12 b6 uh, you know what if you want a benefits of those seaweed video comment below and i'll get that done for you but i need at least a couple comments i've been using those seaweed for almost six years now and mate spectacular so let me know guys but back to the matter too much iodine gives you the same symptoms of having too little iodine is equally as bad for the thyroid one of the ways to get rid of some of the iodine content in seaweed is to boil it so for example if you boil kelp seaweed another seaweed that I own, in water for 15 minutes it can lose up to 99 percent of its initial iodine levels but personally i'd never heat my sea moss and hear me out i'm gonna tell you why some vegetables benefit from cooking others are better raw and some it makes absolutely no difference for example for carrots cooking softens its firm cell structure we can access many more carotins and minerals and more vitamin c in tender cooked carrots than if we simply chewed the raw crunchy ones but for minerals like iron calcium magnesium potassium and sodium the loss is about 5 to 10 percent if you boil or cook it water soluble compounds like vitamin c and some b vitamins are the most vulnerable to loss from boiling steaming cooking or whatever it may be any sort of heat on top of that it's said that most sea vegetables do not require any cooking so if cooking alone can remove 99 percent of iodine within kelp this can be extrapolated over to sea so some of the vitamins can lose their value some of the minerals can lose their value. For me personally, because sea moss doesn't require any cooking, that's not a risk that I'm willing to take. I'd rather preserve the nutrients on this occasion. That is not me advocating to eat things raw. 
some things are better cooked some things are better not cooked it just depends on the actual food and the quality and quantity of nutrients within it but guys let me know your thoughts on that comment below if you agree or if you disagree in conclusion sea vegetables are rich in nutrients but a little goes a long way i won't eat sea vegetables every day especially with seaweeds do not overdo it because balance is key another reason i won't eat sea moss every day is because sea moss is high in nutrients and the reason why sea moss is high in nutrients is the ability to absorb and store minerals in concentrated amounts but as i said in a previous video we don't understand the depths of which toxins can be absorbed too some seaweed is said to contain some toxic heavy metals although there's a limit to the maximum concentration allowed within the sea moss but even though there's a limit and it's capped depending on what country it's grown eating it every day in my opinion may not be the best option i think from anything powerful you should take breaks and you take breaks you try it then take breaks you try it again and that's how you benefit really even guys who take steroids they go on cycles I'm not saying you should take steroids, although I have a video on herbs with steroid impact for bodybuilding coming out soon. In my personal life, I do take breaks often from anything that I do regularly. So I take breaks from my cashew nuts because I eat them very regularly. I take breaks from mangoes. I take breaks from social media. I even take breaks from people. And this allows me to enjoy it more and benefit more when I get back to it. And I think the body as a whole should take breaks, just, just in general. Hippocrates said, let food be that medicine. But if you take too much medicine, what impact can that have on you? Paulo Tote, put that in the history books. But yeah, guys, just a quick video for you. I mean, it's mainly as a thank you to helping my CMOS video hit 1,000 views so quickly. And I hope it's helped you in why I don't eat CMOS every day, why I don't heat my CMOS, why I add vitamin C to my CMOS, and why I also add dose. Before you go, make sure you click the subscribe button somewhere around here. If you want to get into herbs and want to buy my herb guide, click my face around here. And before you go, check out these two videos right here and right here. Guys, I'll see you on the next one.